Hi everyone, I'm Julian Lisa Jr. and I'm hanging out with Rob at Front Row Live. Enjoy. Julio, it's a pleasure to get to talk to you and meet you. Uh, just, just for starters, I grew up with your dad's music playing every single morning in my house. And that's pretty much my first like experience of like great music. My parents have always been in love with, with uh, your father's music. And it's awesome to get to talk to you and talk to you about your music. That is that is incredible because I also grew up <laughs> listening to my, <laughs> to my dad's music, and that's that's the main reason why I'm an entertainer, the main reason why I, I enjoy singing, why why I love um, touring, and and as you know, music is a big part of my life because of that. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> it's great that I actually now on my on my on my concerts I get to sing all those great songs that you grew up listening to, and. <laughs> It's really amazing because it reminds me a lot of when I was very young and going on tour with my dad and watching him on stage. And and just the fact that I get to do that is just a, an amazing experience for me. How would you say that those experiences helped you not just want to be an artist, but also kind of learn uh, learn who you are as an artist? Because it's it's easy to sound like like someone and it's easy to to follow someone's footsteps. But kind of discovering your own sound, your own individualism in, in music and art, uh, what was that process like for you? Well, first of all, when I when when, when I was very young, I, I actually, I didn't jump into the studio to record a song until I was like 18 years old. Wow. 18, 19 years old, which, which, which is kind of late, you know, compared to other people that start, that start music when they're six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. But I... I I had another experience, just the fact that I, that I got to travel, that I got to see, I got to observe so much. And pretty much my brother, my sister and I, when we were little, we, we actually got to travel the world and watching my dad perform live all over, all over the world practically, you know? So all that kind of like um, became like a, like a sponge for me here in my in my in my head thinking about in the future that that I wanted to do something just like that. You know, my dad always said to us, my brother, my sister and I, don't get into the music and business, it's really tough, it's very, very difficult. He actually wanted my brother to be a doctor and, and he wanted me to be a lawyer, you know, it's like what you know, one of those things that and but he he was a he was a soccer player and he didn't get he didn't get into music until he was 26, 27 years old either, you know? So it's a I guess, I guess just the fact that I got to see so much and experience so much is the reason why I'm doing this now, you know, and, 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 and in the last 10 years, I've also changed a lot in my musical preferences. Now that I'm older <clears throat> and I'm doing it, I'm doing the type of music now that I, that I really, really, really truly enjoy. And that really makes me feel good on stage and makes me feel good at the recording studio. And that, that for me is the best thing possible, you know? You've been releasing some incredible uh, music lately, most recently Careless Whisper, which is such an incredible rendition, but you not only made it an incredible rendition, you brought in an exclusive duet, Jewel, another beautiful voice. So what is that process like? Uh, you know, first of all, why did you choose this song? And secondly, like, why did you feel Jewel's voice was perfect for this song in particular? First of all, I... Um, I grew up. I grew up listening to 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 Jewel my whole life. You know, she's one of my favorite artists. I uh, I I'll, I'll never I'll never forget when I was going to college, just listening to to that beautiful voice and those beautiful great songs that, that were number one hits all over the U.S. and all, pretty much all over the world. And uh, when my producer and I get together to do this record under the covers, and we and we try we we were trying to decide which songs to choose for this record. It was so difficult. It was such a difficult process because there's so many great songs. And uh, how do you choose just 10 songs out of, like, we have 200 songs. So we, we had to narrow down to only 10 songs. And, and that's another reason why I always tell Rudy that this is the kind of record that we can do, volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four. One of those songs that I, that I always listen to and I love, because, I mean, George Michael has always been a great inspiration for me also, was Careless Whisper. My dad sang that song, too. 
my dad recorded that song too. So it just clicked. It just clicked. And I and, and Rudy and I said, you know what? Let's do Carlos Whisper, which is one of those songs that everybody loves, that everybody has a great memory about that great song. And if we can get Jewel to do to do the duet, it would, it would just be like a dream come true. When my manager, Mark Oswald, tells me that Jewel has agreed to do to do the duet with me, it was really, really like like I just I, I was just over, you know, I was overwhelmed. I, I was super happy and and the fact that we did we did this duet together has really been like an amazing experience for me. And the way it came out, the Rudy's production with her voice, my voice, it's just it's probably my favorite song on the record, actually. What was that process with Rudy? Uh, how did he allow you to kind of step out of your comfort zone, but at the same time, uh, just try different things, uh, try new vocal ranges, new vocal techniques. I, I You had a beautiful falsetto uh, towards the end of this song, and I was just like, this is yeah. amazing. <laughs> well, I've you know, I've known Rudy for, I don't know, 35 years, because he's good friends with my dad, he's worked with my dad. <laughs> so, and of, of course, I've had dinner and lunch with him in my dad's house a million times. And when when uh, when Rudy and I get together and we talk about doing a record together and and doing a big band record, which is what I've, what I've, what I love to do right now at this stage in my life. Um, and I the first song actually, you know what? The first song I sing in the studio with Rudy is this song. Wow! Out of out of the ten songs, the first song we start with is Curtis Whisper, and it wasn't going to be a duet. It was just going to be me. It's later on after the production is done, after my voice is already there, that 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 Rudy and my, and, and my manager Mark get together and we decide to make this a duet with Jewel. So when I first jumped into the studio and I sing this song with Rudy's production, I was just like, and then Rudy, I, I, I go back into the studio and I listen to the final product. I was I was I was just amazed how beautiful Rudy had produced the song with the horns, with the with the arrangements. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song the way he did it. And I was, just, I, was, I was super happy with it. I was super, super happy with it. And I was super happy with the way he, he coached me on my vocal, the way he, he made me sing in a way that, that it's really, 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 it, just my vocal, the way he produced my vocal was a way that nobody has ever produced a vocal on me. Just, just amazing. I was super happy. It was meant to be. It was about time that the two of you got into that studio and yeah. created some magic. Um, there's ten tracks on here. Like you mentioned, there was so many more, so many more songs that you wanted uh, to kind of pick from. Why the classics? Why why were these classics so important to you uh, as far as this release under the covers go? So for the for the last ten years, all my live shows have been fifty percent Iglesias. When I say Iglesias, is a lot of those great songs from my dad, Abrazame Hey, No Vida de Vivir, When I Need You, It's Impossible, all those great songs. So, so when Rudy and I get together to do this record, we 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 wanted we wanted to because I told Rudy exactly what I was doing, the kind of music that I've been feeling lately. And when he when when we get together to 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 choose the songs, um we wanted classics that that everybody knows, classics that everybody's heard. Even though we have we have some new songs, we got we've got a song by Ed Sheeran, which which I love, "Shape of You," which is it's a pretty recent song compared to the others. And we 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 got some 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 um, some other songs, but classics like it, like "Into the Night" by Benny Mardones, which I love that song. Um, uh, "Wicked Game," Chris Isaac, which I love that song too. Well, obviously, that Billy Joel song, "Just the Way You Are." Those are songs that that Rudy and I. I mean, obviously, Rudy's a little bit older than me, but we actually grew, grew up listening to those great songs, and 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 they're classics because they're still playing on the radio. Everybody knows those songs all over the world, not just in the U.S., all over the world. And uh, and uh, they're songs that that will never go out of style. That will always, always, always be in everybody's minds, and. That's why we, we chose these great songs. Yeah, I love that you created it. I love that you gave it your own twist. Uh, this drops perfectly in time for Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, lastly, to, to close us off, out of these 10 tracks, which one do you, would you say was the most challenging to record? Ooh, that's a good, very, very, very good question. Just... 
Just the way you are by Billy Joel. Mm-hmm. It's one of those songs that the way you have to express yourself when you sing that song, it, it needs to be so credible, you know, because because just the lyrics and 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 the music and 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 the way that Billy Joel wrote that song and and he when he sings it, the way he sings it, it's it's very difficult to to match that. Or even 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 if it's your own style, it's not easy to make that song special. That's yes. that, that's the word. So that was that was one of the most challenging songs that I sang because it really needs to capture your heart, you know. So it's 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 difficult. It was it, it was very difficult and very challenging. But I like I like the way it came out. <laughs> Amazing. Well, this is an incredible uh, record that I can't wait to hear all ten tracks. Um, so far, what you've released has been so good. Brian McKnight uh, duets have been incredible. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, man, I, I'm super excited for this. And uh, congratulations uh, and are in order for you for this. And uh, I'm sure you and I will be reunited sometime soon for maybe volume two or volume three or. Got it, Rob. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for your time and thank you for your interview.